Good morning, everyone. It is not January the 23rd, which is what I said on Wednesday. It's June the 25th. I don't know how the world, how in the world January came out of my mouth. We have been having a ball here. Lilo is here along with my friend Robin Maimoni. And um, Lilo wrote this book here, uh, Love Your Creative Space. And in fact, we did a vidcast, a video recording the other day. And next Friday, we're going to talk about some great ideas. But anyway, she flew in from Texas. And, uh, and then Robin drove over from Pleasanton. Robin is putting up Lilo. Thank you. And we have gutted the room. So I have been banished to a new location, but it's all coming together completely. So I have to tell you, um, let me show you a couple of pictures. Okay. So it's, it's in motion right now. I have to say part of my built-ins are done and others are not. So for instance, I wanted to keep my dad's table. So my friend, Bill Deering, who does cabinetry made this cabinet just to slide right in. Uh, it has some pretty neat things in it. One of the things I did was I left, you can see a space at the top, maybe about a two inch space. And I can put like my mats and stuff like that in. And now the drawer is still missing. We have to get the drawer, but get this, you guys. And this came from Lilo's um, instructions. I wouldn't have even thought about this. Oh, wait, but let me go back. On each side there, like to his right there, that's a pullout. And there's one to the left. And the pullout is designed for garbage cans. And I am going to use those garbage cans to put like my rolls of rolls of stabilizers and stuff like that in it. Wouldn't have thought about that with if it hadn't been for Lilo. And so they are having me. <laughs> my room was a mess. Twenty two years in there. OK. I now have a thread cabinet for all my different kinds of threads. And it was like, okay, how do you want to sort them? And I sort them by brand and then within a brand, then by whether it's silk or rayon or, or not rayon, like a polyester or whatever. So I didn't co-mingle brands. To me, it was more important to keep them together because when I go rather to keep the brands together so that when I think, oh, I want silk, I go to the silk box and then I find the color that I want. But I found myself even sorting embroidery floss by color. They really, really have gotten to me. Here is, okay, so then this is the thing with having people in your life that you trust and love. There are things in there that are kind of sentimental, like my dad built this shelf to go above my fabric area so that um, I could just get more craps, you know, shoved in there. Well, they're making me get rid of it, but I know my dad's happy, so that we could yet do more bins. And everything is labeled. What would I do without my P-Touch labeler? What would I do without this? Like Lilo said, okay, I mean, I, I, this is what they had me do. Listen. I am going to be labeling this whole house. So, John, come here a second. I would like him to give you an assessment with what's going on in 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 there. What 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 do you? Th well, I think they're doing a really good job. <laughs> I uh, I think they're getting organized. I think Alex is going to love it. I think in some cases they may have gone overboard, <laughs> uh, but otherwise I, I think they're getting it labeled and she'll know what's what. Yeah, so, there. Yeah, you'll husband, be happy. I husband it was real cute when Bill was here Deering. His kid, uh, I made him. He had to go to another job, and I made a thing that said Bill Deering. And then all of a sudden, I see his kid over there. You know, he's in his twenties. He's trying to play with this, and he goes, "Well, I want a label." <laughs> and I said, "Okay, Kyle Deering." And then I said, or do you not want to be associated with your dad? And he said, no. And I said, we'll just make it Kyle then. <laughs> so, no, we have been having a ball. It's been hard. And I mean, it's hard work. But what we're going to do is um, I am going to do a tour, a mini tour that we will show very soon. 
and it is not finished because I'm still waiting for the back cupboards, but I'm just amazed at how these two people are just organizing like there's no tomorrow. It's, it's addicting. I just dropped my notes. Okay. One thing I want to show you, I got this from Trudy. Okay. Just can anybody relate? <laughs> Our little furry friends. Yeah, we need all the help. She thinks she's helping Trudy. Yes, she does. So a couple of you have gotten hold of me and have asked, okay, on spinning spools, there is print and piece fuse light under the leaves and the flowers and all that. And you know that if you wash the quilt, 80% uh, of it will go away. These ice cream cones have the print and piece fuse light in it, and I've washed it. And you can't even know it's in there. But let's say you aren't ready to wash it. This is, it because it's not paper, it's a fiber. And I want you to see how it's breaking down over time. So don't be concerned if you don't want to wash your quilt. It's just super uber soft. At first, it's kind of stiff like paper. It's not, but it, it will naturally break down on you. So that's primped and pieced fuse light that we used for our finished applique. And it, the other thing is in going through my stuff, it's like, oh, I remember you. The, the one thing we can't find is I have my mom's button box, but now I can't find mine. That seems to have fallen off the face of the earth, but that's okay. Now, as you know, <laughs> is we have been having problems with our forum. Nobody is happy about this, but thank you. And we're working on it if our web guys will return our calls. It, it, we are, we are, okay. Um, thank you for sending me things directly to my email so I can do show and tell with everybody because I have some really cool stuff that have come through and it's A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-S-N -S at gmail.com. And I'm, I'm begging you to only send things that, um, are pertinent because I, I don't want to have an email box that's got 10,000 things in it. I want things to present to you, okay? Oh, and back to the forum. John is trying to figure out maybe a different, this was recommended to us by them and it's a mess. And so he's looking at other things. We will fix it. We will prevail because people, we are a community and we are a team and we love to work and play together, right? So here we go. Here is, let's take a look at some of the things I got. Uh, this is Diana's spinning spools. <clears throat> and I want to point something out. <clears throat> Excuse me, let me take a little slurp here. She just used striped fabric for her uh, spools. So that is like such a shortcut. I can't even believe it. Also, I adore that zigzag border on it. But then, and this next image is upside down. I'm sorry, I didn't know how to turn it. But um, this was a pattern what that came out. Was it called London Bridge or something like that that we're doing? Correct me if I'm wrong, people. But uh, it, it came out, I think, like in the 70s. But this, I would say, would be its foremother, okay? It's robbing Peter to pay Paul. And basically, it's, it's uh, blades on all four sides. And... You can do this now. You know how to do it. It's been simplified for you. So I'm very excited about that. Um, where did you go? Where did you go? Where did you go? Okay, there you go. Oh, and what are we doing today? We're going to see a video with Connie Fanders about how to use your embroidery mo module as a quilting machine. But I just want to go through this show and tell. Okay, Claudia, I love you. You get Teacher's Pet Award for sending me this quilt, this image, because I think this is a magnificent way to approach the spinning spools. And I believe this was with a sulky pattern. You win, you win. Thank you so much. All right, then this is Anne's. Okay, Anne, Anne has a problem. And Anne, it's a universal problem. Uh, I didn't know how to shrink the picture, but uh, when I describe what her problem is, you guys will understand. First of all, this is magnificent. She is just wrapping up her holiday quilt, and then she fused down the uh, uh, flowers on the outside, and she's like, I don't know what to do. I, I, don't, I, I don't know how to wrangle it, so to speak. Well, yes, it's an issue. Um, 
And that's why if I can do a border, everything up to kind of the corner area before I attach it, I do. But in this case, and I love it, she has chosen uh, to like flop the leaves and flowers into sort of the inner border. So it's, it's one of those things and that you just have to scrunch that sucker up and do it. Now, if you, my guess is you used uh, Apple stick, quilter select Apple stick, that does need to be sewn down because in her next answer question was, can I just sew over it? If you used Apple web plus, that's supposed to be permanent, but I still think you have to suffer through this. All right. And it's a matter of scrunching things up. I'll take Okay, let's say this is it. I'll even take corners and like go fold, fold, you know, fold. And of course you're doing it before it's quilted. And you got to put this in your head. A lot of people have been machine quilting. And of course, we're not talking machine quilting here, but for a very long time on machines with beds like this. The, all these, the, the new long arm, the new extended beds are all brand new. And so it's just a matter of doing it. And yeah, it's a pain in the rear end. If it were mine, because I think that quilt is fabulous, I would, I would just do it, okay? I would just scrunch it up, understand your, and really, you know, that you're doing something difficult. And really, this isn't that big. I, I've done worse, okay? So sorry to not be the bearer of better news. Okay, so Janet... She sent a couple pictures of little girls, and um, these were from her mom's christening dress. So I know Cindy will love to see this, and I'm curious what you're going to do in that part that's not quilted, because I'm going to commission you to do something in that area so it's equal amount of quilting over the surface. And you know, I've got my mom's christening dress or my grandma's somewhere in this house and it was falling apart so i made my kids one i gotta find it and do something with it so here is um look at from the christening dress beautiful just beautiful love it so it was her mom's all right and then we saw this in progress janet and then this is how she quilted it and this is the thing with quilting people is the best thing you can do is look at other people's stuff. And I really appreciate that you have mixed straight line with curved lines. You're a woman after my own heart, Miss Janet. Okay, Margo, we saw this one of Margo's before it was quilted. And I think, Margo, you gifted it to your niece. And so she sent a picture of it quilted. And I want to show you the back because the back is where you can really figure out what somebody has done with quilting. Now, I know Margot quilts things a lot tighter, okay? But what she did, and it was the right thing, was that she quilted it not so tightly because she wants her to snuggle under it. So remember we talked about that. It can be quilted tightly if it's gonna be on the wall or something, but if you want somebody to snuggle, hmm. And then Joanne from Australia sent this, just kick me in the pants. I love this, your self-portrait. Love it. And then also here is her uh, birdhouse. And we see sneaky little kitties in there. Okay. A lot of good show and tell. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Patricia. This is her um, comment on what we've been through with social distancing and how we're all not now starting to come back together. Love it. Absolutely love it. And this is from um, Sherrod and Sherrod West. This is the stitch she found on her Viking Designer One. Okay, this is like the Shelly Tobish one. So you guys, if you have a good machine, um, check it out. You know, just check it out because it may be hidden there somewhere. But with that said, speaking about machines and loving our machines, I want to introduce to you my friend, Connie Fanders. Hey, everyone. I'm here with Connie Fanders. Hey, Connie. Hi, Alex. And, and I have to say I'm so happy that she's 
carve some time out for us because she's going to teach us stuff that actually in preparing this today's thing, I'm like so interested. Um, Connie has been in the Bernina family for how long? Well, I started as a Bernina dealer in 1987. And then, uh, then I started to work for Bernina in 2006. So most of my career has been with Bernina. So I think it's safe to say, you know, these machines inside and out. <laughs> I do. I do. And I know a lot of the models through the years. So. Right. And, and currently you have a new role. They keep taking advantage of your expertise. <laughs> and your new role is? I manage the embroidery products for Bernina. Great. And today we're not talking about embroidery. Mm -mm. Nope. So what are we talking about? <laughs> What are we talking about? No. Actually, we're talking about computerized quilting, quilting, which happens to be done on the embroidery machine. You know, it's interesting, Connie. I'll do lectures and all on quilting design, and I'll say, well, who has this nailed? And nobody ever puts their hand up. So you're really into something that I would say is pioneering and also an answer to this, you know? Yeah. <laughs> It really is because it's uh, it's basically just a new quilting technique. And for those who have the embroidery module, or we now like to call it the quilting unit. Mm -hmm. So those who have the quilting unit can take advantage of that and use that as another technique to quilt their quilts. Well, let's take a look at exactly what you're talking about. And I'm sure I'll have questions if you don't mind at the end. Okay? No, not right. at all. Go ahead. So yes, if you want to bring up the first image, we're just going to start by showing you a few examples of some projects that I have uh, quilted using the computerized quilting technique in combination with other quilting techniques. So here is just a simple pillow um, and you can see the computerized quilting technique done on the uh, strips of the coins. Go ahead and flip to the next one, Alex. And this one also, this is one where you can see the round feathered wreath. That's the design I did with the computerized quilting technique. And then I added the free motion quilting around the border. This is great. Okay. To the next image three. Yes. And this is actually the quilt that I have behind me here. And for this quilt, I used the computerized quilting technique to quilt the entire border around the quilt. Is, and then I used a free motion quilting in the middle, as well as some straight line quilting around the squares. Okay, so I'm blowing it up so we can take a look at the border here. Nice. Okay, yes. And that border is a seven inch wide border. It's just a zigzag border that just goes simply goes back and forth. Okay. And that was so simple to do with the, uh, the quilting unit on the machine. And then I think I have another, there we go. This one here, I had fun with Tula Pink Fabrics and her embroidery designs. In this image, you can't see the embroidery designs, but I did, she has a collection, a quilting collection of her whimsical characters. And so I embroidered those uh, around the quilt. And then I actually put this particular quilt on my quilt frame and I did ruler work on the chevron pattern in between. So this is a combination again of the computerized quilting and ruler work. I love straight line quilting. I just, that just yeah. sings to me. And you know, it well, takes a little bit of skill and talent, but boy, yeah. it has good results. Yes, yes, it does. And then I think I have one more example. This one's a little bit far away in the photo. But uh, this particular quilt, it's about a 45 by 45 inch quilt. But on this particular one, I did computerized quilting through the entire quilt. So all of the negative space on this quilt is um, quilted using the uh, quilting unit on the embroidery machine. Beautiful, so, beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so shall I go to number six? Yeah, go ahead and I'll explain a little bit more of how I have combined these techniques. And okay. then um, I would like to talk about the process. Please. That's because... one of the biggest questions I get is what, what, where do I start? And exactly. So, so we'll explain a little bit more about what uh, computerized quilting is. And if you see in this particular uh, design that Alex has up, this is from the beads quilt that you see behind me this way. And on this particular one, what I did is I uh, embroidered or 
quilted with my quilting unit, the flower design. And then I added the free motion quilting stitches around the flower just to give it more dimension. And then also on the strings, you see the light gray strips. Those are like strings holding the beads. Mm -hmm. So I did free motion there and then stippling in the dark gray around it. So in this particular quilt, I, I added, I did two quilting techniques, the free motion quilting and computerized quilting. Fabulous. And um, yeah, you can go to image seven and eight. You can flip through those as it shows. Here I have this hooped in my embroidery unit. And then the next image, image eight, shows uh, me doing the stippling stitch around that. And of course, I use the stitch regulator, so I had all my stitches nice and perfect and even. Right. I have to tell you, I have fallen so in love with that stitch regulator, especially on the Q20. Ah! Yes. Yeah. It's amazing. It's, right. it's amazing. It's very good. Okay, then go ahead, go to image number nine. And that just shows uh, this pillow that I have back here. This is the stack coins pillow. And this is just in the embroidery hoop. And again, too, you can see, I don't know if you can see it on the camera here, but let me get it going the right way. There, you can see these designs here are what um, I quilted using uh, the quilting unit on my domestic machine. So you're saying this is not hard to do? No, no, not at all. Not okay. at all. Yeah. It, it really goes fast. And what I like about it is the quilting designs, you can get such accuracy. I mean, it looks like it has been done with automation on the long arm. And with, you know, the floral, the floral wreath pattern we showed earlier, it, it's just, like I said, that accuracy that you get with long arm and automation, but only you get that on your domestic machine. So Connie, do you have to, before we move on, my question is, is do I need a special program or something like that to, to make this happen? Okay, well, you do, and, and it's basically just an embroidery design. So if we think about just regular embroidery, there are embroidery designs that are quilt patterns. And so there are just embroidery patterns, and then there are continuous line quilting patterns as well. Just as there are for the long arm machine, those are also available for the domestic sewing machine nice. in embroidery. Nice. Yes. Okay. And, now, are we, where are we going to go now? Okay. Let's, um, do you want to see more examples of the combining of techniques? Let's go ahead and show uh, image 10, 11, and then 12. So I'll just explain one more quilt, then we'll get into the process. So for this quilt here, this is, um, it's just a little uh, table topper that I did. And for this particular quilt, my first step in talking about the process, I first did uh, with my dual feed, I did straight line quilting around the designs here. And go ahead to the next image, Alex. I'm, 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 not, I'm paying attention to you and not my job. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> okay, and then my next step was to put it on the uh, domestic machine with the quilting unit or the embroidery module. And I then uh, embroidered the feathered wreath design. And then go ahead to the next image. And then my last step was to do the border. And I did this free motion with, the again, the Bernina stitch regulator and did the border around the quilt. Okay. So, yeah, so that it hopefully explains what computerized quilting is. It's just another quilting technique that we can use, um, you know, in with our other quilting techniques of free motion quilting, ruler work, or straight line quilting. You know, the thing I want to say about this too is that I did a red work once that was a grape wreath. Okay. It was red. Mm -hmm. work. And then I did a applique pattern with the same wreath. And this just goes down to good design is good design, and you don't have to put every design in their little box, right? They can cross-pollinate. And I think if you think of it that way, it's kind of like, oh, okay, all right. Absolutely. That's a perfect way to explain it because that's what you do. You, you, It's all in the process of planning how you want to quilt your quilt. And you think about that for the pillow, for instance, my first step there was to do the straight line quilting because that held everything together. And then I did the embroidery design. How fun. So, okay, yeah, where are we so going next here, friend? Well, <laughs> I want to talk about the entire process. Okay. And so 
uh, because that is one of the biggest questions I get, you know, where do I begin? And so the first thing is, you know, after, of course, you have it all pieced, uh, you will want to baste it together and baste however you choose to. My preferred method is to use safety pins, but it's whatever your method is. And so I pin baste everything together and then I will secure it. And I like to secure it with a basting stitch. On our machines, we have a great basting stitch that will, um, it'll stitch every fourth stitch. And so I can make my basting stitch about three quarters of an inch long, which is super easy to take out. So then I will do that securing stitch, which then enables me to take out my safety pins as I'm regrouping my Can you hair my cat? Can you hear my cat? I cannot. Oh, <laughs> I just to say, people, I have an old senile cat. So let's go on and excuse me. Can you just say? I'm just too busy here? talking. <laughs> okay, so you're going to secure it with a stitch. Sorry. I secure it with my basting stitch. That's right. Yep. And then my next step is just to wherever I want. I start with my largest embroidery designs or quilting designs, and I hoop that area of my quilt, and I just stitch that. And then I move to the next area and put the next um, design on. When I rehoop, I leave my outer hoop actually on my embroidery module and I just release the inner hoop. Actually, I, I don't know if you can see, but I can just release it. I put my inner hoop on top like this and then I shift my quilt to the next spot and then rehoop it. Okay, so, so it goes okay. really fast. I'm an embroiderer, okay? And now I wanna okay. try this out. Is there any big trick of hooping with batting and all that? With the batting, uh, that is where your securing comes in, you know, where I basted it, because that is what's holding all of your layers together. I've been experimenting with all different types of fillers. And, you know, I've used uh, uh, Insel Bright and then some placemats. With this technique, I've used the Soft and Stable which makes a beautiful uh, for doing project bags and totes. You can quilt those. And then I've used, I've tried several different types of battings and I've even tried different layers, many layers, I shouldn't say many, two layers of batting sometimes just to really in an effort to test the hoops and okay. how secure that quilt is going to be while it is moving in the Okay. In the model. okay. Yeah. So I think there's some more here, some more images. Okay, yeah, what else do we have here? So yeah, the rest of the images just show this technique, again, doing more. So you could go to image number 13. And and this is the the Tula quilt I have right here. Mm -hmm. And this is, again, I embroidered all of the designs first. And what's kind of fun is they are kind of hidden within the quilt. And that's what I like about it. You know, they're not real bold and they don't stand out like they're an embroidery design. Oh, that's beautiful. They just blend in with the quilt. And so that was my first step. And then go ahead, put in image, uh, what do we have, 14? There you go. And that's where I have it then on my long arm. And I'm doing the ruler work in the chevron uh, pattern. So there's no big deal to switch from one machine to the other at all. Don't feel like you're stuck on one machine. Oh, absolutely not. Or one technique. So now this is the color chart quilt that's behind me. And this is doing my uh, rows of straight line quilting, which actually ended up being my um, my border for my border. (laughs) You know, so that was my my boundaries. Maybe I should say my boundaries for the border that I embroidered. Can I throw a tip in there? Even when I'm using my walking foot, I will still use a straight line a straight line ruler because it just helps because even though you're on a walking foot or you're using dual feet or whatever, it, you can still get kind of wonky. And so I just use that just as a thumb guard and it works beautifully. That's an excellent idea. I will. Tr- I'm going to try that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. So where are we now? What's, okay. Um, then the, yeah, image 16 there. will show. Okay. So that is the actual quilting of the border on that particular quilt. Wow. This is really exciting, Connie. Yeah. It's just fun. I tell you, it is so addicting. I have been making uh, so many quilts here because I can now quilt them so fast with my, my embroidery module. And that image just showed me doing the free motion quilting, just that little ribbon stitch in the small borders. And then this was this one here. This is the quilt that I uh, quilted the entire quilt 
with the uh, embroidery machine. Uh -huh. And this shows my basting stitches. And my basting stitches, I placed them on this particular quilt. So it made my actual square that I wanted to put my square embroidery design in. Um, and so that's how I placed it. On, I, I'm going to ask piece. you a question that I'm going to be throwing you a curveball here. Uh, okay. Is there any reason you're not using a basting product and you're using pins instead? No, I have no reason whatsoever. It's, um, I guess I'm a, I'm, <laughs> I'm still old school with my, my quilting techniques okay. and I have the safety pins and that's just what I've used. Okay. Um, but other suggestions, do you have other suggestions of what you like to use? You <laughs> Quilters select, <laughs> views like. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Oops, and this is, I think, yeah. the last image. Look at that. Yeah, and so then after I basted it, uh, and then I, I went back and I quilted all of the oh, designs in it. So yeah. this is going to be kind of a crazy question. People go to buy their machine, and you can get some Berninas with the opportunity to add on an embroidery quilting unit, or mm -hmm. it comes with or whatever. Are people coming through the gate now to get this first for quilting? And then embroidery? Yeah, yeah. well, what we're, we're seeing, um, that's what I would love for mm -hmm. this to come to. But we're now seeing quilters seeing a real purpose and the advantage of having the embroidery units or the quilting units, as we're now calling them. And uh, so those who maybe have a Bernina machine without it are going and purchasing those now. You know, right. All of those who maybe have a Bernina 770 out there with, you know, and bought it just for the piecing and the free motion and the straight line quilting. Well, if you add that embroidery module onto it, then you can do computerized quilting. Exactly. Yeah. And I, and I really personally push the 700 series and a, yeah. most people, if they don't get the top of the top of the line 700, they get the medium so that they can right. add on, you know, which right. is just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I'm actually really enjoying this and being able to just focus on the embroidery and uh, really spending time, more time with the machines. It's just, it's been a delight. I, I know it. people are out there thinking, yeah, she's got a tough job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> she works well, her tail off. get to work people. on the new products too. So <laughs> that's a lot of fun as well. Well, and then speaking of that, would you mind coming back at some point and just tell us what's new or if you've got some new discovery? Because I'm going to say this. I mean, everybody knows I love Bernina. And we love Bernina <clears throat> for supporting the quilt show. But any information you can bring to anybody with a high-end machine is a gift. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. I would love to. And uh, we actually have our Bernina University for our dealers coming up in July, where we have a lot of new product launches. And so after that, I would love to come back and talk about some of the new things because we do have some exciting things great. coming out. That would yes. be great. Well, thanks so much. And I'm glad we survived a senile cat in a thunderstorm. That's right. I am too. It all went pretty well. <laughs> So thank you. Well, thank you, Alex. I enjoyed it. Isn't she great? And the thing I really appreciate about Connie, well, many things, is that, you know, she, start, she was a sewer, quilter, whatever, had a store, you know, from ground up, understands everything from inside and out, okay? A couple questions came up. First of all, I meant to say free fuse. Whatever I said for the powder stuff, it's free views. John Rennan, free views. Um, Kay, as far as the basting stitch on your uh, 570, you're going to have to look in the manual or Google it because they're all different. I can't help you. And then um, somebody said they don't care for spray basting because it gummies up the needle. Yeah, it does. It does. And a uh, free fuse doesn't. Uh, but you can take like a little, what, uh, oh, John, what's that going when you, alcohol and, you know, clean it out that way like that. You can do that. But yeah, it does gum it up. And that's one of the things we wanted to avoid. And then also Roscoe, um, if you're looking at a new machine, don't trade in your 1230. Yeah, they'll take it. Of course they'll take it. 
don't trade in your 1230. Because if you get a higher end machine like this, you're not going to want to drag it to workshops. You just not. Keep your 1230. That is a classic. If, if we talk about the Bernina classics, and at some point it's going to break and it can't be fixed. But it is a classic, just like how I think the 700 series are classics. And remember, if you have been influenced by any of this from these lives and Connie, let me know. I'll send you uh, the $100 coupon that you can get a check from Bernina USA um, to spend on whatever you want. Probably you'll buy another foot or something. So uh, go to your Bernina dealer, check it out. And um, yay. So threads for this process, I don't know about that. Okay, you're just going to have to play with it. I don't know. Now, before I say goodbye, I have dragged somebody in here. Come here, Lilo. They've been working their tail off. Lilo. We're sweaty. we so sweaty. The author. <laughs> okay, what do you want to say about this mess? <laughs> okay, first of all, it wasn't a mess. Alex has... Way more thread than any woman should ever own. I will say that. I've spent two and a half days working on thread, <laughs> organizing. How about scissors? Oh, yes. We have the tell-all <laughs> in Instagram. I thought I'd put that out there today. About This is Alex's one scissor drawer. She has more scissors. Um, no, it really hasn't been that bad. The thing that we discovered was, unlike me who moved every two and a half to three years, I had to go through my studio every single time. You haven't gone through your studio. 22 in, years. 20, okay, so you have a lot of stuff lot that of you've stuff. accumulated. And what we found was every time we either found money. <laughs> so we have lots Starbucks. of money. Starbucks. <laughs> or we found needles. It seemed okay. to be needles were, and money were everywhere. And and so it was just that there was a, a bin of this, a little basket of that, and a little something of that. And it's just been a process of where all we did for the first day was just sort things. Well, when, We just had stacks of things sorted. And one thing you said was, why do you have, or Rob and everybody, why do you have thread in this part, in this right. part, in this part? Well, it's for aerobics, I guess. I don't know. Well, that was good. You could get your steps in. But <laughs> what we did is we did... One, and you'll get to see it once we have it all finished. Mm -hmm. One side of the studio is mostly fabric mm -hmm. and bling and other things like that. And the other side is all your threads and things. Well, I so think, that you're not back and forth trying to figure I, out what I think what I would like to do yeah. before we go and play this afternoon is get a video. I mean, it's not finished. It's mm -hmm. not even close. I mean, it's close. It's close. It's close. But close. we're waiting on a couple of built-ins. Yeah. That yeah, didn't yeah, yeah. make it yet. Yeah. And so that meant we had to sort of stop. So we'll do a, we'll do a video and I'll show you real soon. All right? Yeah. It's been, it's been really fun. And there's a lot of really good secrets now we know about it. Alex's studio. She found my dirty magazines. <laughs> I'm letting her take them home. No, yeah, no hey, good. not everybody has a Burt Reynolds fold out. True, true. Not everyone has a Burt Reynolds poster that yeah. they've kept. Just yeah. saying. So anyways, um, we got to get back to work and then we're going to go take Lilo and play this afternoon. Oh, don't forget D. Christopher is tomorrow at 10 o'clock um, Pacific time in the morning working on the uh, flower garden and quilt. You can get that pattern PDF from us at thequiltshow.com and you can just jump in. It's a beautiful, beautiful quilt. I wish I had it to pull up right now. I'm calling it Big Red. It is really it's pretty. pretty. I it's went to the pretty. shop and I got to see the real, the real deal. That was really pretty. She also got to see next year's BOM. Ha ha! <laughs> so it's been fun. Yeah. Okay, guys. <laughs> thanks so much for joining me. See you Monday. Hang out with Dee tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.